My name is uh, Rene Enriquez. My uh, CDC number is 869471. I have uh, been involved in organized crime for 20 years, and I've been a Mexican mafia member for over 17 years. The structure of the Mexican Mafia is, is, uh, is uh, comprised of three components, the members. Uh, there are about 100 members in the United States, including the federal prisons, Arizona state prisons, California state prisons, and members in society. Uh, it's a small group, but it's very powerful. Uh, the members uh, believe in a contractionary um, philosophy, fewer members, bigger pieces of the pie. Uh, that's why there's so few numbers. There are also the camaradas, who are next in the, in the descending rung of, of uh, power and importance in the organization. The camaradas is, are the soldiers, the backbone. These are the doers uh, in the organization. They comprise the crews, the mesas, which are controlling boards on the main lines, which control prison main lines. They, uh, they pretty much effectuate uh, most of Mexican mafia activity in society and in prisons. And then there are the Sureños. Uh, what the EME consider, considers Sureños are anybody from Southern California who is Hispanic or part of a street gang or illicit uh, type activities. It can also encompass individuals that come into prison uh, from Southern California. They're considered Sureños as well. Well, those are the three components of the organization. Each individual has a specific crew. He has an individual that visits him and he communicates with that individual, his wife, his girlfriend, his friend. Uh, and they have a specific established code. Say, for instance, I understand that Pelican Bay listens to my visiting tapes. And say, for example, you're my visitor. Uh, understanding that an individual is monitoring and taping my conversations through past indictments, we understand uh, every uh, monitoring and uh, surveillance technique utilized by Pelican Bay. We understand completely what Pelican Bay is capable of. And it's not very much. Uh, Say, for example, that you were my visitor and I needed to talk about a crew member paying a, a specific amount of money. I'd say, um, how's everything at home? You would tell me, everything's fine. Joe came by last month and uh, he uh, helped me uh, in the garden. He planted four rose bushes and uh, he says he'll come back every month to help me maintain the yard. To the individual monitoring this tape, it sounds like Joe came by and helped my wife do gardening in the front yard and planted some rose bushes. To me, it, I understand this to be that Joe came by and paid me $400 last month, and he says he's going to be by every month to pay $400 and to help around with the crew. Uh, so it becomes esoteric to the individual layman who's listening to this tape. But for the insider, I understand completely what's happening. And the codes are crew-specific, so it becomes rather difficult to decipher uh, these uh, cryptic messages. So uh, it's pretty easy to circumvent the security procedures in terms of visiting. Not only do they use uh, these carnival talk, this carnival talk that we, we like to call it, and this, uh, this innocuous form of conversation to circumvent the things, uh, the security measures, but we also use sign language. Uh, we have, uh, we all studied uh, American Sign Language in the Mexican Mafia. Most of the individuals understand some form of sign language. We have money, drugs, uh, dead, hit. There are a multitude, uh, black, there are just a multitude of signs that we've learned and utilized in the, in the visiting room uh, in order to circumvent the audio recording. Uh, they also utilize notes, which they secrete in their body cavities and take out to the visit and hold up against the window for the visitor to read. And uh, this is frequently done. Um, circumventing the security measures in the visiting room are easy. Uh, it's done with uh, regularity. and. Uh, it's almost impossible to stop. And every weekend, from that visiting room, there are assaults occurring, there are uh, crew uh, uh, instructions going out, there are RICO activities going on, uh, money laundering. I mean, any crime that you can imagine is occurring in that visiting room on a regular basis. Uh, I personally utilized uh, the trust accounts to launder money. Uh, I would receive Mexican Mafia payments from multiple sources. And this is only a fraction, a small fraction of the overall payments that I received. Uh, 
I know multiple individuals in California state prisons, federal prisons, that utilize these, uh, these trust accounts to launder money. They receive uh, money from a variety of sources, uh, and once it's on their books, they fill out a form called a trust withdrawal application, and they're entitled to release money to any individual they, they wish. Uh, we do this on a frequent basis. I was allowed to utilize the trust account system to buy a U.S. savings bond, double E savings bonds, uh, thousands of dollars worth of bonds. I was allowed to establish a trust, uh, a bank account and, uh, and earn interest on the account in the Bank of America in Crescent City from Pelican Bay. All of these savings and these bonds were placed in the Pelican Bay State Prison uh, vault. But this is a regular occurrence. I mean, this is a, a, a system where we can receive illegal money and release legitimate checks, cleansed money, uh, tens of thousands of dollars moving in and off the books on a regular basis. I think an investigation will reveal that some individuals have upwards of $25,000 in their accounts. This is indivi these are individuals in SHU who haven't had a job in 20 years who receive this type of money on a regular basis. And small payments, small increments of $100, $150, $200, $500, but it's cumulative. Every cent of that money is criminal money. There's no mistake in it. It doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist, and I don't mean this in a derogatory fashion, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that a Mexican mafia are receiving increments of $150, $200, $300, $50 on a regular basis is uh, amassing money from uh, illicit sources. Uh, nobody in society can, uh, can afford to pay individuals this money for their canteen, nor does an individual in prison need $20,000 on his books for uh, bubble gum and, and candy bars. Uh, this is, this is a, it's, it's clearly, it's painfully obvious that individuals are conducting criminal uh, enterprises from their cells. And the Mexican mafia understands that nothing can be done about it, so they continue their activities. There's also TRIPS OTC, we call it OTC, up to court. Uh, this is where an individual in a specific county uh, subpoenas multiple uh, Mexican Mafia members or singular Mexican Mafia members down to court. Uh, when the CDC receives a subpoena, it has to release this individual to the county that's requesting him uh, as a witness, material witness, uh, and they're always bogus. They're always bogus. They're, there's no premise to bring these individuals down. It's solely a Mexican Mafia member uh, sending uh, uh, communications to a county, uh, to a specific individual there requesting that he pull him down from trial. Uh, this is done with frequency. We once attended a meeting, uh, 15 Mexican Mafia members in 1997, uh, where we were called down for a federal recall trial, and we conducted two or three Mexican Mafia meetings with uh, all these individuals, uh, validated, bona fide Mexican Mafia members. Uh, and the CDC paid for the trip. The Mexican Mafia is a true organization in, 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 the, in the purest sense of the, the phrase. It's, uh, it rivals with some of the, the more traditional organized crime groups, La Cosa Nostra. Uh, although we haven't replicated their financial success, uh, we far exceed their influence. Um, the Mexican Mafia has a stranglehold in Southern California. It's expanded to Arizona. It has members in uh, New York. It has members in Florida. It has members in Hawaii. It has a member in Connecticut. Uh, the Mexican Mafia is extending and expanding rapidly. Uh, the progression you see now of the Mexican Mafia is nothing compared to its unrealized potential in 10 years. Uh, it will reach that if it allows, if the CDC and law enforcement agencies allow it to proliferate and continue as it is today. Um, it is not a prison game. It's obvious that there are prisoners who are Mexican Mafia members, and there are gang members who are Mexican Mafia members, but there are actually very intelligent leaders in the upper echelon. Uh, I was a member of the upper echelon, of the elite individuals that had strong business acumen, that uh, set policy for the organization, and I know the objectives of the people who are at the leadership, who are at the helm, and uh, they intend to create a huge organization with very few members but with huge potential. True organized crime, in, in the purest sense of the word. It's organized crime. This is not a prison game. This is not a bunch of individuals sitting around wearing headbands and khakis. Uh, a bunch of cholos uh, acting tough. These are gangsters. These are contemporary, modern-day gangsters. 